There we go. Moving in. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Do you want this camera? I can't be bothered to hold it anymore. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Douglas. Oh, Charlotte wanted me to hold this camera, so now I'm holding this camera instead of Charlotte. It's and... definitely not to eat your chips. <laughs> now it's your job. Oh, okay. Have it. Okay. Yeah, thanks. She's got me chips. I got your chips. I'm so sorry. Spider! Oh my god, there's a spider! Oh Jesus my god. Christ! Christ. Oh. Starting off the news this week, a very exciting study from the Large Hadron Collider as it has been announced that three new exotic particles have been discovered. Quarks, an elementary particle, meaning it's not made up of other particles, usually come together in groups of two or three to form other particles, for example protons and neutrons which make up the nucleus of an atom. Exotic matter are particles that contain four or five quarks and are particularly rare and unstable. Scientists working at the Large Hadron Collider have observed one pentaquark, made up of five quarks, and two tetraquarks, made up of four quarks. These were completely new configurations of quarks that had not been observed before, adding further to our understanding of these incredibly rare parts of our universe and the forces that hold them together. Just a reminder that, as always, we have our sources in the description if you want to do some further reading on this really cool story. In other news, weirdly, is the discovery of a new species of giant water lily called Victoria boliviana, and it is the second largest species of giant water lily in the world. It was actually mistaken as another species and had been considered as such for nearly 200 years. A horticulturist at the Royal Botanic Gardens requested seeds from Bolivia and studied the plant against two other species, publishing their findings in the journal Frontiers in Plant Biology. He found it to be significantly different enough to be designated as its own species, naming it after the country it comes from. This mischaracterization of giant water lilies has been attributed to their difficulty to collect in the wild. And now over to Ben. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news for this week is a really fascinating study that proposes an unexpected reason for the survival of the dinosaurs at the end of the Triassic period and their subsequent rise to dominance. This research describes the occurrence of debris caused by the action of moving ice, preserved in strata dating to the late Triassic and earliest Jurassic in Jonggar Basin, located in northwestern China. At this point in prehistory, the basin would have been positioned at a very high latitude, about 71 degrees north, and clearly would have been frozen over during the winter, as indicated by the presence of this debris left by ice. This is interesting by itself, as the Earth's atmosphere at this time contained very high levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide and was in a greenhouse state, and this is now the first direct evidence for freezing winter conditions in the high latitude regions of the Pangaean supercontinent. Amazingly though, the study also reports the presence of dinosaur footprints at this locality too, showing that these reptiles were clearly well adapted to survive in freezing temperatures. This makes sense considering that non-bird dinosaurs were ancestrally insulated, but the research then uses this evidence to suggest this could be why the dinosaurs became so successful after the extinction at the end of the Triassic period. This mass extinction was caused by huge volcanic eruptions that changed environmental conditions and resulted in a decrease in light levels. It also meant that every now and then there would be intense volcanic winters with widespread freezing conditions. These freezing temperatures would have been devastating to the terrestrial, medium and large sized non-insulated reptiles of the Triassic, whereas the dinosaurs, which were insulated and had already adapted to cold conditions, were therefore able to survive the end Triassic extinction, diversifying in the Jurassic and ultimately taking over the niches left vacant by the reptile lineages wiped out by this event. It's a really interesting paper that presents some fascinating evidence and again shows how remarkable the dinosaurs really are. There's also been a really cool study published this week that describes the earliest occurrence of the false thumb in a giant panda ancestor. Panda hands are unique in having a wrist bone that has evolved to function as a sort of sixth digit, becoming a kind of opposable thumb-like structure that helps in manipulating bamboo. Well, this research has found that the ancestral panda Ailuraktos already had this enlarged wrist bone acting as an opposable thumb all the way back in the late Miocene epoch, a remarkable discovery. However, they also find that this extra thumb hasn't enlarged any more since the late Miocene or become a fully formed extra digit because pandas are constrained in the way they walk, as the wrist bone must also act as a weight-bearing structure in addition to manipulating bamboo. 
The fact that the structure was present in this ancestor also suggests that the panda lineage evolved a dedicated bamboo diet as much as 6 or 7 million years ago. A very interesting study indeed. Back to Dog in the Studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. Great. Uh, so, how long are you staying with us? Um, just a couple more weeks and then I'll just give up and head west. <laughs>